All right, what's going on, family? I want to welcome back to a uh, welcome you back, excuse me, to another real talk video. I pray everybody is doing well and having a wonderful, blessed day as we off top. Thank the Holy Spirit for another blessed day. And once again, we are on top of the ground and not under it. And things could always be so much worse than it is. But we are grateful, we are humble to see another blessed day. We are very thankful. Amen. Title says that God really create evil. Oh, what a hot topic. This the most high, Yah. The Yahoo really create evil. Uh, first of all, let me give a shout out to you, Sister Jamie. Uh, we finally up to your video response. Um, powerful, powerful. Uh, what you sent me, and I understand what you are saying. Um, and I've reviewed that video about three times now. Um, and I'm with you, sister. Uh, Miss Dangerous Games, a lot of times when people use the, use the saying, God showed me this, or God told me to tell you this. I'm not saying everybody, but with our spiritual discernment, we have to be very cautious and careful with what's coming out of their mouth. You don't never hear me say that on here, ever really, um, about how God have showed me this and, and start telling other people this and that. Because the danger of this is, that people have dreams versus a vision. And the danger with dreams is they don't always come true, what you're telling people. And I'm not, once again, I mean this video out of love with no disrespect toward nobody and what they have dreamed. I, I get emails with dreams all the time. Like I tell y'all, I'm not an interpreter of dreams. I keep it real with people. But a lot of people are using their dreams saying that it is, it is a vision. One thing about a vision, visions always come true. And it's so easy to really tell a lot of these dreams because if they don't line up with the scripture, they just dreams anyway. And I'm, once again, I mean that with no disrespect at all. And what you hear going on in that video too, my sister, um, is a lot of uh, opinions. Now, you wanted me to expound also on this light and darkness. So, Sister Jamie, we thank you once again for this. And this is a very hot topic because Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7 is one of the scriptures that's so mainly mistaught and taken out of context. And I'll tell you why we'll get into that. So I want to uh, say that off top, and I also want to say this. This is a pre-recorded video. It may look like I'm live, but I'm not live. This is already pre-recorded, but the comment section is live. Whenever you see me do these videos like this and you don't see me respond back to the live chat and you see the countdown from two minutes on down, that lets you know that, and I don't have the headset on, that lets you know that I'm not live. When I'm live, I have the headset on. So this is pre-recorded, but your comments will be live. So I wanted to say that before we get started. Now, here we go. One thing that 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 didn't sit well with me sister Jamie in that video also was when he said the most high died mm. when Yahshua died on the cross first of all the book of John 4 and 24 teaches you that God is spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so let's cut that lie out right now off the top God the most high Yah ain't never died He's been beginning and the end. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then the Word became flesh. So to say that God has died, who can kill God and what would God die for? See, that's when people add what they think in with the Word. God show you what God is and what God is in Scripture. Okay, so let's knock that out the way right quick. Now, First of all, in a teaching like this, you have to go back to Genesis 1. Because you look at the creation, and in the creation, he showed us everything that he created. And then when you get up to Genesis uh, chapter 1, verses 31, Yah said what he created was what? Good. He didn't say he created evil in the beginning. Remember, sin had not happened yet. And remember that even the angels and Adam, Eve, all had free will. 
You will never read where the Most High will make you do anything. Why? Because he did not create us as robots to forcefully serve him. Evil is the absence of good. Now, here's the question. Here's the real question, Sister Jamie, and to everybody. Did the Most High really create evil or did the Most High allow evil to happen? How many times on here you say you hear me say in many videos there is a difference in causing something to happen than allowing it to happen? Did he create evil? I give you the answer off top. No. But wait a minute before you cut the video off, because I know what Isaiah 45 verse 7 says, but we're going to get into that in a minute. But Yah have never, ever created evil. He allowed evil to happen. Evil had to take place after sin stepped on the scene. If he created us as robots, then not only us as humans, let me just say mankind, but also the angels, we would have had no choice but to serve him. So when you look when you look at the most high, the most high look at things from a holy perspective. Not like us. Our eyes we see sinful things. Uh, 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 a different perspective. Now let me go to Isaiah 45 and 7. I'm I'm gonna break this down in the way where it's gonna make so much sense. And I'm gonna say this before I read the scripture. This is the danger when you have all these other translations. This is the danger when you don't have a strong concordance. This is the danger when you think these English words don't have more than one meaning. This is the danger when you don't get the biblical Hebrew definition of these words. Now let me pull it up. Teach Holy Spirit. Isaiah 45 verse 7. Here you go. King James Version. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. Okay. You get no argument from me. This is what it says. I form light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. Now, this is what we must understand. This is why the apocryphs is so important. Once again, the strong concordance, the true meaning of these words, even the blue letter Bible is, is very good. Now, let's focus on this word evil, Sister Jamie. The word translated evil is from a Hebrew word that means what? Affliction. Adversary. I mean, excuse me, adversity. Calamity. Misery. Distress. But, here we go. Here's when the confusion come in in these different translations of the Bible. The other major English translations render the word disaster. When you look at the NIV, the HCSB, you see calamity, the NAS, and then of course you got the ESV version, the NRSV. So these different translations is what make people believe that Yah actually said that he created evil. Just like if I'm sitting here and I tell y'all, I need some air. You got to determine what do I mean by air. Do I want to go outside and look up in the air? Or am I talking about the air I breathe? You see what I'm saying? Same word, different meaning. Or am I talking about the Ruach, the spirit? These King James, these English words can have two or three different meanings. Some more than that. So he wasn't saying that he created evil. Think about that. 
just like the Most High didn't cause those things to happen on Job, but he allowed it. Yah hates sin. For the Most High to create evil, that's sin. That would be a huge contradiction because he plays no part of sin. He never sinned. Sin separates us from him. The wages of sin is death. Evil always equals, sin equals evil. Wickedness. Now, I'm still on the same scripture. This is what Isaiah was showing us in the original meaning, Sister Jamie. What he's saying is that Yah brings judgment, disaster, wicked on the punishment. I mean, on the on, on the wicked. He brings punishment on the wicked, excuse me. His judgment. What he's saying is he didn't create evil, but he will allow some evil things to happen on the disobedient. Those who rebel against him. Just like he done on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. If that makes sense. So these once again, these, these different translations of the Bible will make you believe that, oh, he, he did create evil. No. He didn't create evil. That's mistaught. Once again, it should be when you look at that scripture, it's, it's showing that he brings disaster. He brings disaster on those who continue to rebel against him, the wicked who's hard at it. That's why even right now and been for years, so many people think every time they see something happen with the weather, they think it's automatically the Most High, and it's not even the Most High doing it. Yeah, there are times when the Most High use you know the weather but the, the, the majority of the time you see things going on because people don't understand that the devil have access to the weather that's what he did on Job or even when when, when Yahshua was was in the boat and the storm came why do you think he rebuked the winds and calmed the storm down do you think that was the most high sending the storm on his own no Satan is the prince of the power of the air with all the technology the things they shoot up in the in the, in the sky, look at HARP, H-A-A-R-P, you will understand that that is not the most high doing this stuff. Even in Matthew um, 24, he told us about the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places, but he never said he was the one doing it. <laughs> we got to catch this stuff. But he's allowing it to happen, not causing it. That scripture also is showing you when Israel was obedient, how Yah blessed them. But when they was disobedient, see, the most time will use the wicked to get the righteous back in, 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 on track when they was disobedient. So when you read the original meaning of Isaiah 45 and 7, once again, it was never saying that he created evil. The definitions have been messed up. And that's not the only scripture like that in the Bible. That's messed up and mistalked like that. Some it's some about the translators when they chose certain words. Um, it, it, it was it was confusion um, to choose certain words. I'm not gonna say confusion all the way in a sense like that because it's our job to read what the see people. Some people are just cool with reading the King James Bible and they cool with it like that. But I've learned. For years and years of studying and studying, you can't just use the King James Bible without a strong concordance or a blue letter, a blue letter Bible, excuse me, or the Apocrypha, the laws books like Enoch, Jasher. You have to you have to put these things together so it will make so much sense. That's why to me it's not a mystery. It's just when you don't put the laws books in place, even though a lot of people don't agree with that, you are missing more and more detail. Mm, teach Holy Spirit. That's why you have to get the book of Enoch to line it up with Genesis 6. But once again, Isaiah 45 and 7, you have to get the original meaning of evil. Just like you got to get the, the the spiritual meaning of darkness and death. Death is taught is taught more than one way in the Bible. Spiritual death, physical death, even baptism. Baptism is taught about seven, eight times in the Bible, but every time people hear baptism, they're going to automatically connect it with water. And I'm not talking about everybody do that, excuse me. 
So when you are studying, teach Holy Spirit, I got to make this point more and more in this video. When you are studying, you got to get the true information to go along. I mean, let me say it like this, the true meaning of those words to go with the scriptures that you are studying. Because keep this in mind, they was not right. They was, they was not talking in English. And in every translation that they come out with, something gets left out as proof. It's proven. Look at the NIV. Line your NIV up with the King James Version and you tell me everything is done. Now, spiritual darkness. Let's look at that for a moment. The meaning of that is when you are so, so far away from the Most High. You live in your way, not Yahweh. You are in spiritual darkness. I like to say deep, deep, deep spiritual darkness. That's what a lot of people are living in. And Isaiah also spoke about this in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. That's why he said the people that walk in darkness have seen the great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. This is why we are the light. How many times have the Bible showed you about light, lightness? versus darkness Yahweh has no darkness in him so once again when you think with a carnal mind or trying to understand this with your own leaning to your own understanding you mess up once again the most high cannot die the most high is not a man even in Revelations, uh, what is that, chapter 22, around verse 4 or 5, the Most High said that it ain't, it ain't gonna be no more light. He said, You don't even need the sun no more, for I will give the light. So why would, why would y'all be a part of darkness? As a matter of fact, you and I, we all was in darkness when we didn't know the Most High. But now that we know better, when we give ourselves over, when we repent and confess and, and, and become new, a new creature in Christ, as the Bible say, old things pass away. We're no longer in spiritual darkness. You know who live in spiritual darkness every day? Unbelievers. Because their mind have been blinded by the God of this world, Satan. They can't see this light we're talking about. They blinded. But our light is shining. We shine in darkness. This is a spiritually dark, dead, dying world. Even in the, in the New Testament, light and darkness are great symbols of good and evil. Because the light always represents good and the evil always represents darkness. Now, I'm, I'm going to blow some of y'all mind with this. Have you ever really read in the Bible with the correct, now listen to what I'm saying, with the correct definitions, the correct meaning of these words, when you break it down, when you read it, this is the question I want to ask you. And it's not a trick question. I just want to see your feedback in the comment section. Have the Bible ever mentioned that Yah created darkness? Or was it just there? I know he is the author. He is the, he is the designer of the creation. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you this for a reason. I want, I want you to look at this. Did the Bible ever say he created darkness? We know in Genesis 1 he says the earth was empty and it had no form. Darkness covered the ocean. He didn't say he created it though. It just said darkness covered the ocean. And the Most High Spirit, uh-oh, was moving over the what? Water. He saw that the light was good. So he divided the light from the what? Darkness. So the big question is, when was darkness ever created? Or did he even create darkness? Why I'm saying that? I got, see, this, this is golden nuggets for some of y'all. Some of y'all think I'm talking crazy, but it's only a few going to catch this. I'm going to blow your mind with this. Did the Bible ever say God created the serpent? Mm -hmm. I know people are going to gather a few scriptures and say, well, I think by reading this, 
is pretty much saying, you know, he, but it, in reality from studying, did the Bible really come out and say he created the serpent? Or did it say he was more crafty than the other beasts of the field? Just give me some feedback on that, even if you don't agree with me. Just something to think about. So once again, in um, Isaiah 45, verse 7, when he says, I create darkness, remember these different translations. Just like he said about evil. Same as darkness. Have y'all ever created sin? No. Put a pen right there. This is why you have to study the book of Enoch. You know why so many people don't understand they call it a gap? Or you ever heard somebody say the gap theory? So many different other teachings. Because Enoch, or some may pronounce it Enoch. Enoch puts information in play that fills what was left out in Genesis. Why do you think Yah was so mad at the fallen angels for what they had done? And why they never have a chance at eternal life ever again? Because they taught mankind things they shouldn't have been teaching. They messed up the DNA. They messed up so bad that they lost their spot and they would never, ever, ever have a chance at eternal life ever again. Never. Think about that. That's how bad they messed up. Have you ever looked at it in that sense? I'm going to wrap this video up now. And I ask you this. Another question. Is Lucifer really Satan? Hmm. Is he really Satan? That name Lucifer means morning star, uh, son of, dun of the dawn, day star or shining star. This is my other question to you. Why is it both Yahshua and Satan are referred to as the morning star? Angel of Light. See, Sister Jamie, from that video you sent me, it's not, it's not a mystery. Some people think the book of Revelation is a, a um, excuse me, mystery, but it's not. Re Revelation always revealed to you what it's saying. So when I'm looking at this video that you sent me, um, there are, there are a lot of things, like you say, that's off balance to me. Especially when he's speaking in tongue all the time and there's no interpreter. That's another thing I look at. See, I'm very cautious and I examine when you send me something, y'all. I, I really look at it and I make a spiritual discernment. I make a, a, a righteous judgment on it. That's why, like what he's talking about in the video, that's why so many people talk about the gap theory. And if you don't know what the gap theory is, that's the um, when you study it, the gap theory is the view that that um, people say that you know y'all created the fully functional earth with all the animals, including the dinosaurs and other creatures we know only from the fossil record. But then the, the theory goes something happened to destroy the earth completely, and most likely the fall of Satan to earth. So that the planet became without form and void. And that's why they say at that point, y'all started all over again, recreating the earth in its paradise form as further described later on in Genesis. But there's debates about that also. This is why I always tell people there are three different earth ages. One has already passed. We live in the second one now. And the three is the one to come. People are still arguing on how old the earth is. They still arguing on is it round or flat. You know how it goes. You hear these arguments all the time. Problem is God's time is not our time. We don't know everything. We never will in this life. There are people that put evolution over God. Scientists. Um, that people say science versus the Bible. 
astro uh, what's that astrology all this stuff you know zodiac sign all this stuff is it's against what the most high teaches he tells you in scripture it's against his word but that's what a lot of people are in and then you got these other teachers about the outer darkness I get questions about that all the time um, I believe Yahshua said that in Matthew 8 verse 12 he used the term out of darkness he was in that parable he was describing the condition of, of, of loss, great sorrow, woes. You know, meaning it's a place of eternal punishment. Think about it. Out of darkness is what's most used to describe the grave, hell. So once again, Sister Jamie, uh, that video you sent me, I watched it closely. Um, once again but once again I'm going to close with this you must use a strong concordance you, you you gotta look at the biblical Hebrew it has to be taught along with the King James Bible he never created evil never what kind of God would he be if he created evil matter of fact if he created evil what's the whole purpose of us trying to work our way to heaven or if he made robots <laughs> would I really even be sitting there right now would you even need me would I need you he don't make us do anything remember when when when, when Lucifer fell the, the, the Bible say a third of heaven left with him not being forced they voluntarily left on their own. The Most High allows trials and tribulations, tribulations, excuse me, to test our faith. Our faith will forever be tested. That's why we need a huge, strong faith. But to say that Yah created evil from that scripture that's why I want to break that down. Y'all just give me some feedback with this. I want to break that down on why a lot of people say he did create evil because they only read that scripture from the English standpoint. But I guarantee if you, if you just do what I say and look up the Hebrew meaning, you're going to see a whole different scripture. That's the danger when you don't use the tools you need I'm not calling the King James Bible fake and all that. No, 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 no. The sixteen eleven is is it's, it's, it's the most is the best you gonna get to the to the to the best. But I'm, I'm I'm always telling people you need more to go with that. They were not speaking in English. How many words in English do you see that spell the same? but have three, four different definitions. That's what happens with this Bible. Just like the word cloud. Cloud don't always mean the cloud in the sky. In the Greek, cloud means crowd. So when you read these scriptures and you go back and put the original meaning in there, oh, you see a whole different scripture. So once again, Isaiah 45, chapter 45, verse 7, was not talking about he created evil the way people think he created this, this let, 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 I'm trying to close oh this is so powerful to me Psalm was born and Psalm was created Psalm was born Psalm was created once again in the beginning God said what he created was good Animals knew no sin, had no sin until the fallen angels. All that stuff happened. The, the, the watchers, as the book of Enoch said, when they saw that the daughters of men were fair, had sex with them, and then came the giants, the Nephilim, the Geber babies. That's when all hell broke loose. That's why he found grace in the eyes of Noah. Noah was pure. His, his, Noah's blood was pure. Have, Noah and family haven't been tampered with. Noah, you and your family and the rest of the animals that ain't messed up, 
That's why the Bible say they mess with every beast of the field. He had to destroy the rest of them animals. That's why when you talk about the dinosaurs, the, that's another thing to point out. God did not create the dinosaurs. The fallen angels created those dinosaurs. That's why when you look at them animals, look at them the animals, and then look at the, the, the face of a dinosaur or the body of a dinosaur, you can see those different animals in there. But he had to wipe them out. Once again, that's why he wouldn't forgive those fallen angels for what they've done. They corrupted the bloodline. They messed up everything. And you cannot teach Genesis without adding in the book of Enoch. I don't care who disagrees with that. You have to add in what they taught and why mankind. I just told my mama this on the phone yesterday about what they taught mankind. Cosmetics, women, how to make weapons of war knives. That's why they were so powerful. Think about it. They was right there beside the most high. So they, they, they mindset, oh man, we couldn't even fathom what they could teach us. And that's why he, he changed some of them down in the book of Jude. But in the end, Lake of Fire, where they would be tormented forever and ever and ever. God never created evil, but he allowed it. Shalom, family.